Hey, my name is Joe and I have the opportunity to serve here at Rightway as our creative director. Before we hop into this message, I wanted to take a quick moment and say thank you for watching. No matter where you may be watching from, we're believing that this message is going to encourage you like never before, challenge you, and build your faith. Now something quick before we start, take a quick moment and subscribe. Not for us, it's more for you. We would love to be a continual resource for you in building your faith and partner with you in your walk with Jesus. All right, you ready? Set your expectation and get something to take notes with. I hope you enjoy the message. Amen. <clears throat> take your Bible, iPad, phone, whatever you're using there as a point of contact. Even if you're using your journal, let's just lift it up. Say this with me so we can move a little faster today. Say the word of God is the answer. The answer is in the word. Amen. God, I thank you for these, your people. I pray now that you give them eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to perceive, receive, understand your word. Let it be sown on the rich ground of these, your people's hearts, and let it bring forth a mighty harvest. I move out of the way you in charge. All of you, none of me, more of you, less of me. See through my eyes, hear through my ears. Let them see, hear, and say, no man except Jesus the Christ, ministering and speaking these words of life into their being. When it's all said and done, we'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said amen. Turn to Luke chapter 11 verse 2. For those of you that have my study notes, uh, they can put the QR code on there real quick. That's going to be a scripture correction. Uh, I, I did Luke 11 and 6 and that's my fault. Thank you for Nia for bringing that to my attention. Looking back over the notes today. It's supposed to be Luke 11 and 2. Uh, and so that's where we would pick up. We've been in a series of teaching call. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Are y'all writing? Y'all getting ready? Okay, I'm going to let y'all get ready. Some of y'all don't know what's about to go on, but it's okay. Y'all ready? Step up. Step up. Step up. Step up. What are we saying? No, All right, y'all can sit down. Let's do it again because there's a lot, bunch of folk. Now y'all can participate. We stand up on the second step up. And, and, and we're using a prophetic gesture by saying no more common, only exceptional. Step up. Step up. Step up. Step up. What are we saying? No more common, only exceptional. Now, this is what I call my, my walking journal. Don't, don't, don't jank me. My daughter get on. She said, where you get that little thing from? I say, well, it's my walking journal. And God, when, when I'm walking and the Lord, when I say walking, it's the one I take with me. Right? I got a big one at home but so that I won't forget when the Lord says something to me or when an intrusive thought hits my spirit so that I don't forget about it. I'm like, oh, Lord, what was that? What did the Lord say? No, 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 no. I write it down. So I can go back to it and look at it and ruminate over it. You get what I'm saying? And get it in my spirit. And so it was on 7-13-23 that the Lord told me, he said, step up, step up, no more common, only exceptional. That we should be exceptional saints. We should be exceptional in our serving. We should be exceptional in our services. We should be exceptional in our sowing. And we should be exceptional in spaces, meaning when we go to certain places. That, you know, you ever noticed how service today has gone down when you go places? I, I went to Walmart and I had to take something back. And, um, you know, I, the young lady was there. First of all, she was on her phone, and she shouldn't have been on the phone. I had to get her attention, and she acted like I was disturbing her. And I told her I wanted to, you know, switch something out. And she said, well, is it going to be the same thing? I said, yes, it is. I said, what you want me to do with this? She said, well, you could just take it with you. So I took it with me. I came back, and I, I said, here goes the thing. I said, now, what, what about this? And she said, oh, you could just put it over there. I looked at him. Well, I'm 52. She, she, you know, she young. I, I ain't scared of these young folk. Not at all. Because if they want to, you, you know, I let them know, you know, they made more than one pistol. All right. I got the bearing arms. It's biblical. You give them, and it's the bishop that's not supposed to fight, not the pastor. That Bible. So, you know, on, 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 on my mama. Well, I'm on guard. Ain't no different. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> how, how you want to go at this? Don't let the jacket fool you. you got, nah, don't believe none of that right there. I just said. So, <laughs> so, so anyway, I walked up to her. I said, I need to say something to you right now. I say, you're practicing how your life is going to look. I say, I'm the customer. You're the employee. It's not your job to tell me where to sit it. You should have taken it and placed it. I say, I, she, she held her head down. I say, no, 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 hold your head down. Look up. 
I say, I'm telling you, you're practicing right now half doing life. You are developing your body in the habit of half doing life. And you don't even recognize it. She just, oh, no, no, no. You know, she kind of, I, I can tell when I, because she tried to laugh it off. I say, no, I say, you need to hear what I'm telling you. You are practicing what your life is going to look like. Well, the other day I went down there uh, to, to Piggly Wiggly and uh, got some out the store. And I heard a little girl say, hey, hey, I know you. I said, you know me? She said, yeah. And I looked at her. I say, Walmart. She said, yeah. She said, I'm going to stop practicing. I say, I'm glad you listened. Glad you're listening. Because she could have took that information like most of this generation do and think they know everything and totally threw it away. But she remembered me because, and this is what I'm talking, this is another component of that exceptional living. That as adults, we got to stop being afraid. And it ain't about confronting and getting into confrontation. It's just about dropping that wisdom off. Just dropping that wisdom off. Like, hey, you need to stop doing that. Like one, one, the young lady, one, she gave a testimony last week, and, and I won't point her out, but she came up to me after service, and life was kind of like things were kind of confused, and pastor, you know, what, what, what do I need to do? And word of wisdom kicked in. That's a gift of the spirit that I have. And I told her, I said, you need to stop trying to live like a successful black woman and live like a Christian. And immediately that week, all the stress left her life. Because when you got to try to live like a successful black woman, you got to try to live up. You got to try to live out for every other black woman. Well, what you going to do for the black woman that don't want to be exceptional, that don't care nothing about her credit, that don't, you know what I'm saying, that don't care what her life looks like. So we shouldn't be trying to live to be an, a, a, a successful black man. We shouldn't be trying to live to be an, a successful. You know, it's amazing how we claim it when we want it to benefit us. But then, okay, let me say it another way. Then I got to get off that real quick. If, if that's the case, right, we, we, need to, we need to do all our own stuff. We need to do all our own. Well, why are you mad that they not, don't want to include us? How is it racism when they don't want to include us, but we want to have stuff and not include them? So you want to do it and it's right. They do it and we say it's racism. Well, isn't that, wouldn't that be the same thing? You get quiet when you talk like that. No, no, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, black power. I'm proud of the, of the hue that God made me. And, and, if, and if it give credence and credit and, and uplift my community, praise the Lord. But I'm living to glorify him. This whole thing started out that the earth was of one language and the earth of, was of one speech. That's how it started out. The Bible says he's made of one blood all nations to dwell upon the face of the earth. Get quiet when you talk like that, brother, us. So, we're talking about this exceptional living. I want to move quick because I don't, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time there. Today, I brought my journal out here because I came in this morning at 6.04 a.m. Did they adjust my time? Ooh, they sure did. Uh. Y'all had to come back at 10.30. Um, at 6.04 a.m., I heard the Lord say this, prepare for a new season. Come on, say prepare. But you know, preparation, preparation deals with planning. So you got to prepare for a new season. And what we typically taught in the church is that God going to do it whenever he get ready. That ain't Bible. God has something in store for you, but are you planning for it? Are you planning to see it? Because when I plan, I position myself for what God is ready to do. So I'm thinking about maybe doing a one-night master class. I'm praying through it that I, to teach you how to plan for your success. Teach you how to plan for your success. Do you know that tomorrow can possibly already be planned by what you're doing today? So just hold on to that. Hold on to that, that you got to prepare for a new season. See, by, by, the end of, um, by the end of December, usually, we've already, our church calendar is already finished for the whole year. I try to get it done in October. I'm former military, so the end of the fiscal year is actually October. 
So in my mind, I'm thinking if I don't get it done in October, November, December, I'm already two months behind in the new year. So I try to get it done or not. But you got a plan. Things just don't happen. They must be planned. And if you're going to be successful, you've got to plan for. We got, we got my alma model, the floor football team here. And, and they, you just can't run out there on that field and expect to win a game. You got to plan to win. Amen. All right, well, there you go. Okay, all right, so let's talk about this then. Well, exceptional is a huge part of that. Come on, say exceptional. Say this with me. I am an expression of God sent to the world to leave an impression. Say it. I am an expression of God sent to the world to leave an impression. Say it again. I am an impression of God sent to the world to leave an impression. I'm, I say, I'm saying this respectfully. I ain't got no problem against, you know, the, the, the female, anything like that. I don't listen to her anyway. She's not a part of my generation, so whatever she is to you, she is to you. But, but the church, Christian saints, should have an impression like the beehive. Beyonce. Like y'all don't know who that is. Y'all know who that is. That's the type of impression saints should have on the world. I mean, you just go, you just flow with that. Just flow with that. We should have a Nike impression on the world. Saints should. But actually, in contrast, they kind of look at the church and be like, I don't want to have nothing to do with that. Because y'all can't even get it right and y'all going. So why should I just come up there and add to the mess? But not that right way. We're getting it together. No more common, only exceptional. No more common, only exceptional. That's the way, listen, I'm talking to all of my leaders and staff. That's how we do ministry. No more common, only, I walked, uh, 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 see, and here's what that exceptional look like, because I ain't going to have a lot of time, so let's just kind of talk through some stuff when we talk about exceptional spaces, that, that every door in your house ought to be able to be left open. See, see, let me say something. It, only in the church, let me go down to my notes. So. Let me read this statement. For some reason in the church world, we separate things that the Bible reveals to us that it builds on that, and you don't have it because you're missing that. Only in the church do we separate God and money, but Jesus don't. He said if you ain't faithful over the least, you won't be ruler over the much. So if you ain't being right with $30, you ain't going to do right with $100. But in the church, we separate. That ain't going to talk about the money. The Bible don't separate your stewarding over your finances. The Bible doesn't separate how you take care of your children. See, what we do, we put praying, speaking in tongues, uh, coming to church, serving in church. We put all that over here, right? And then when it comes to how you talk to folks, how you deal with your enemies, you getting to work on time. Let me, let me go to my football players. You running the play and not stopping short because the ball ain't coming to you, but we need you to run because we need them to think that the play is coming to you so we can complete the play over here because we need you to stay a part of the team. We need you. See, we, we put all this over here like that don't have nothing to do with God. And God say the reason why you're not being effective over there in your prayer life is because you can't even keep your closet clean. The Bible don't separate it. We do. So what we'd rather do is just, ooh, we can, we'd rather pray a house down, pray a room down, prophesy people, but your mouth filthy. You're not exceptional with your mouth, but you want the fact that you can pray the house down to cover up the fact that your mouth nasty. God is like, I'm not separating those two things. Bitter and sweet water can't come out the same fountain. 
it's just, it's just the church. It don't take all that. No, 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 no. It takes all that. I don't believe it's either or. I believe it's both. Are you listening to me? So we got to stop in the church. We got to stop separating this like God don't care nothing about. And religion, that religion did it that to us. But see, you don't take that approach when it comes to you going to weddings. You don't take that approach when it comes to you going to parties. You don't take that approach when it comes to you going to concerts. It don't, you don't take that approach when it comes to you going to your vacations. Vacations, vacations, whatever vacations. Come on, say it all goes together. There is no separation. As a matter of fact, I would, I, would, I would venture to say how you are naturally is telling on how you really are spiritually. Because it's impossible for you to have it together over here and then not bleed into over there, faith. It's impossible. It's impossible for you to be saying you got this awesome prayer life and this awesome prayer ministry, but your marriage is a mess. It's impossible. No, 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 because the better you are spiritually should result in you being a better impression naturally. Well, we quiet when you talk like that. And you know what I believe happening? That's why I'm on this message, because the church is ignoring the exceptional component. We're totally ignoring it. We treat it like it don't even matter, like God ain't even concerned about it. When Joseph had to go see Pharaoh, he didn't go to the king's presence any kind of way. Don't care if it was a wicked king. The Bible says when he found out he was going to see that man, he went and cleaned himself up. He went and shaved himself. He became exceptional because he realized, I'm going to the king, but I'm also an expression of my God. And so I got to be befitting before the king, not for necessarily him, but for the one that I'm representing. So I'm not going to him looking any kind of way. See, I, I don't agree with the come to church as you are. No, I, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. You don't go to a wedding just as you are. You don't go to court just as you are. Now, what, what, what am I mean just as you are? I'm not saying you got to get like me. You know what I'm saying? I like this. I'm going to keep this. I'm, you, I, I, tennis shoes, I do that sometimes, but y'all already know. I like the peacock. You get what I'm saying? That's it. That's me. I'm, I'm cool with me. But what I am saying, even if you in tennis shoes, it should be your best. Right? You, you should be the best in whatever you come. Now, we just come to church any kind of way. It don't matter. But catch you Saturday night going to the club. You don't know if that's the last thing they had. No, I know it is because I see their Facebook page. They walking around with Louis Vuitton bags. I know it. The come as you are is really talking about your heart. It's talking about don't try to fix this up. Bring this to him raggedy just like it is. And if that's all you got, but then fine, that's all you got. But let's stop playing God down like it don't matter. You get quiet when you talk like that, but it's just the truth. It's dangerous to be gift strong only. It is dangerous to be gift strong only. Gifted in prophesying. Strong in praying. Strong in intercession. You're strong enough, but your credit bad. What kind of witness is that? That you can pray out demons, but you can't pray out debt. You preaching good. I, I know you're glad I only got a minute left, but you're teaching good. This is this exceptional component we're missing. And it... <laughs> Ah, it ain't right. Put me around religious pastor right now. He ain't preaching the word. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm preaching the word. Watch this. I'm going to make another statement. People who are gift strong only prostitute and demonize natural laws. I want you to be strong in prayer. I want you to be strong in faith. But all of that is supposed to be for the purpose of manifesting a better you. Not the same you. Like at least five years in now, you ought to be down to at least two cuss words when you were up to ten. Okay. But if... if 
if, if five years in with God and I can still push you and you cuss me out, thank you. Think about it. Okay, stop. Think about it. What would you say? 16 seconds in a row. What would you say? You think I'm wrong. You don't know how long it takes them. Okay, fine. Let's go with what you said. Let's go with what you said. What would you say to a person that walked up to you and told you they've been in the gym constantly, consistently for five years? No more, they look the same from the first day they went there five years later. They tell you, I've been hitting it hard every day for five years. Huh? You say, where? You say where? Where? I like that. Because after five years, there should be some physical expression of what you've been consistently partnering with. So don't tell me you consistently partner with God and ain't nothing naturally changing about you. See, give strong people. Give strong people. They never take it out of the spirit and implement it to their natural lives. Where well, change, because watch this, how would they believe except they see? So they need to see change in you so that they want the same thing to manifest in their lives. Maybe God just kept us in worship because he want me to take another week with this. Because I'm telling you, man, we got to get this right. Man, we got to get this right. We good spiritual, y'all, but we missing it because it's not bleeding over into our natural lives. I got three books I've already finished. I'm just praying on the Lord when he wants me to release them, but I got one book called Power. And it's talking about natural, what I call sub-governing laws that are actually in operation in you, like those 12 systems that are already in operation in your body that they're operating whether you believe it or not, right? You eat, a system kicks in, make you go to the bathroom. You don't have to do anything but eat, right? Oh, so we got there, there are natural laws or sub-governing systems that are operating in our lives that if we get the revelation and we're attentive to what's happening in my decision making, I can make that law work for me rather than being ignorant of the law and it, not, and it work against me. And I'm just praying about, I think I may need to release that book real quick and get it to y'all so y'all can understand those different laws because we ignore them. And we just want prayer to do everything. Different types of seeds produce different types of harvest. Right? And you can, you can pray all you want to, but if out of prayer you don't become a good steward of your money, prayer alone is not going to get you out of debt. Pray alone is not going to raise your credit. We, we got to stop doing this in the church because we just, just pray, just pray and everything going to be all right. Pray is for the purpose of God responding to me with the what to do. So if I'm not listening for the what to do, I hadn't finished praying. The completion of prayer is God responding to me with the what to do. He may say stay still. He may say move. He may say, I don't know, but I, I can't, I, I hadn't finished praying if he don't talk back to me with the what to do. Does that make sense? So that means that from my prayer, he's going to give me a natural implication to, to, to operate so that I see supernatural. Notice it's not just super, it's super, come on, it's super. So why do you keep discluding the natural? And just make it super. God going to do it. He said, no, that's not how I operate. It's me and you together. And when it's me and you together, it is super, it's supernatural. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this little short time. Help us, Holy Spirit. We trust that you are the perfect gentleman. And that you come into the lives of willing yielded vessels. So we yield ourselves to you, our minds, our hearts. And we ask you to speak to us, show us. Help us to bring ourselves to this exceptional life that you've called us to. To relegate and demonstrate the expression of God so that we leave an impression on the world. And we give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to take a moment before you jump off and once again say thank you. For you taking the time out and joining us, it means the world. I also want to say thank you to the many members and partners here at Rightway that sow into this ministry. Your generosity helps us accomplish the vision that God has given the right way and advance God's kingdom by reaching others, and it's all because of your giving. If you haven't gotten the opportunity to give and you feel led to, you can give online. Just jump over to rightwayccc.org slash give and watch God bless you as a result of you being a blessing. Again, take a moment and subscribe to our YouTube and beyond watching messages here, join us live on Sunday mornings, 8.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Central Standard Time and meet us in the chat. 
Thanks again, and we pray that you continue to know God personally, grow in God relentlessly, and show God compassionately. See you again soon.